with noise. Can you be loud? That wasn't good. How about just the loud people? That's Talk to your neighbors. Tell them to start screaming. All right. You know what you're here for, right? A whole lot of fun with Pinky and the Brain? All right, let's not wait. Let's bring them up. We have Rob Paulson as Pinky and Maurice LaMarche as the Brain. Come on down. Pondering what I'm pondering. <laughs> all right, we're gonna do a question and answer. I'm gonna come down and roam amongst all of you and have your hands up. I'll come find you. We'll start with questions. I think question one is gonna be uh, talk us through how you got the part, Pinky in the Brain. They like to hear that stuff, right, guys? Yeah. I paid Steve a lot of money. <laughs> I loaned him the money to pay Steve. Yes! Hi, Fred the Brain. This is so nice of you guys to come see us. We are so happy to be here. And, um, yeah. 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 We walked in. We walked in and I got this room is huge. Is anybody going to show up? And look at you. You're filling the room up. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank, Thank you. you. Great to see all of you. Thank you. They're fine. But for those of you coming in, the twenty dollars seats are not going for five bucks. So come on, up front. it makes us feel like it looks great on you on when it's being streamed live. You see, like the place is full. Yeah. So, in answer to that question, I mean, we uh, we did it the way we get you know most stuff in show business. We went out and, and did our, auditioned our little hearts out. You yeah. know, the call came down. We had already been on Tiny Toons together, and they they had this new show. Foul mouth, F O W L, and I was saying things like, Yeah, you, I like that, Groovy. Oh, dad, come on, why you for two cents? I'm dead, come on, you, I fucked someone's side and down, you got a dad, come on, and yes, in fact, I did swear. Uh, and they would beep it out and we put in dead, come on, but uh, it was incredibly great. And it was Tom Ruger and, uh, you know, the, the genius behind um, uh, Tiny Toons and Animaniacs, and now, uh, Disney 7D. The 7D was on. On which Maurice? Which, which dwarf are you? I play Grumpy. Yeah. Typecast. <laughs> but I love a cheese. Watch the 7D. You know what? No matter what age you are, Tom Ruger has made sure that this is a show that will be enjoyable to adults and kids. Even though it's skewed to kids, it's got some of that animaniac y kind of archness. You're gonna, you're gonna love the 7D. They make you laugh because we've got a great cast on the 7D. We've got Billy West. Uh, we've got Scott Menville, uh, Stephen Stanton, uh, Kevin Michael Richardson, the great Bill Farmer, Goofy as Doc, and, yeah. and, and Kevin's uh, happy. He's just so goddamn happy all the time. <laughs> but it's like, it's almost the kind of pinky in the brain kind of dynamic. Because he's so friggin' cheerful and grumpy. He's so grumpy. His catchphrase is, do I have to be behind him? You're gonna love it. So to tune into the 70 TiVo, and it's on it's at 10 o'clock now. Disney uh, XD. Uh, but anyway, so, you know, our friends from Tiny Toons knew they wanted to have in, you know, at least to begin with, the core cast of, uh, of Tiny Toons to try for this new show, Animaniacs, where they said, it's going to be a totally different universe, there's going to be no Bugs Bunny, whereas in Tiny Toons, we were like, they were like the descendants of, or the, you know, of the same species, and we were learning from Bugs and Daffy at the Acme University. They wanted us to, this anime maniacs took place in the whole of the universe, and uh, so we came in, and, and uh, you know, I was the first, I was the first one in. I had the very first audition. It's the only time in my entire career I was on time for an audition. It was 9 a.m. and I was there at 8:59 a.m. The first thing they put in front of me was this, was this lab mouse with this giant head and this Orson Welles face, or at least I thought it was an Orson Welles face. Yeah. Turns out had nothing to do with Orson Welles. They weren't thinking Orson Welles. They based the character on Tom Minson, who was a writer at Warner Brothers Animation. But I saw Orson Welles, so I thought, well, they've created a little show for me. Uh, <laughs> me and my Orson Welles impression that I drive everybody crazy with. And lo and behold, I did the Orson Welles thing, and they went perfect. Yeah. So apparently I was cast on the spot. They never saw anybody else for brain all day. But my, my dear friend here. Yes. 
He's your friend. No, I don't roll the holes. <laughs> I, uh, it, it was a, uh, it was a fait accompli, I think, that once Maurice, you know, read for the brain as the brain, as what you guys know as the brain, it was a done deal. There were many people who auditioned for Pinky, um, I don't know why I decided to throw in that, um, English sort of accent, although, uh, you know, when I was a kid, my heroes, uh, among others were, um, the Pythons and Peter Sellers and the Goons and all those guys. Which we bonded over when we first yeah, met. When we, we all knew all the words to all the Python. We, yeah, yeah, and then we became, you know, we're huge fans of Peter Cook and Dudley Moore and all those guys. The two Ronnies and yeah. Ronnie Corbett. British comedy on the buses. Yeah. Doctor in the house. So when I met him on uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, <laughs> I don't know, I let, I let fly with some Pythonism or some yeah. Dudley Cook, Dudley uh, Moore Peter Cook thing. He just jumped on it, and all of a sudden we did an entire Python sketch in like five minutes. This is my brother. This is my buddy. <laughs> we had a Pythonathon, so. Um, and on and on and on and on. And on, and on. So uh, yeah, I, I I was so fortunate to get the gig. I, I presume that Mr. Spielberg and Mr. Ruger just determined that you know that was a good fit. I do know Maurice told me, and um, I subsequently had it confirmed by the person himself was that uh, John Aston. Yeah. Um, uh, our friend Gomez Adams what came in second as the voice of Pinky. Yeah, at the end of the first day of casting, they thought, well, it'll be Mo and John Aston. And then Rob came in for his audition. He's always on time. He had the first yeah. the next day. And uh, your Pinky sold it, and they thought these two guys would be hilarious. It was, and, and interestingly, Mo and I worked with John Aston on Tasmania. We were both uh, regulars on. Tasmania. And on Killer Tomatoes. And Killer Tomatoes, and then I did an animated version of The Addams Family, in which John <coughs> played himself. And now, on the new Ninja Turtles, his boy, Sean, is um, Raphael. So it's kind of a, a really interesting little way to sort of... He did a little picture called Lord of the Rings. Yeah. He doesn't wear his rubber feet at work, though. Um, <coughs> Maurice, I love it. Maurice was the voice of Taz's father. Howdy ho there, son. How about a little blah 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 yakety smacky? <laughs> That's a show that <coughs> Crosby as Taz's father. We probably had more fun making that oh. show than any other show, but it didn't have the Steven Spielberg, right. you know, imprint on it. So it kind of got shuffled away to the you know mid-afternoon time slot. But we didn't go back for more. But boy, the, boy that, oh, we had such a great time. Every it was a Friday, Friday every Friday. Yeah. We had a party every Friday. Right? Tasmania. Have you got some questions for us, Jeffrey? I'm looking right now. No we hands got any questions? In the air. We got. We'll start right here. What have we got for Jeffrey? Come on now! Hello, Johnny. Listen. Uh, two things. One, if you made Snow White and the Seven Samurai, I totally watch that. <laughs> and, uh, I'm sorry. If what? If you made Snow White and the Seven Samurai, I would totally watch hey, that's that. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah that's a you idea. thought of it. Uh, two, did they make, um, Yes Always after you did the impression of Orson Welles for the brain? Yes, they did it. Very astute young man. Yep. Very, very much so. They made that episode, hopefully, to shut me up. Uh, <laughs> before we, do you guys know what the, what is your name, sir? Uh, Joey. Joe. Joe. Do you, do you guys know what Joey is referring to? Yeah. All right, could you give them a brief explanation of what Okay, I'm so... New Year's Eve 1984, I'm doing a recording session that lasts almost up to midnight. It's the longest session I've ever been in. It's, we're dubbing a French card, a French puppet show into English. Was, oh my God, I was there, we were literally there 12 hours doing this. Phil Proctor from the Fire Sign Theater. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, when he's us, he said, here, this will cheer you up, because I totally missed out on my New Year's Eve plans. He said, this will cheer you up. He gives me this tape with all these great outtakes on it. And the first thing on the tape is, an outtake of Orson Welles doing a frozen peas commercial in England. <laughs> and him getting extremely and hilariously irritated with these two directors who are giving him the most ridiculous direction, emphasizing certain words, etc., etc. And to be fair, these knuckleheads are giving Orson Welles yeah, direction. Exactly. <laughs> so so I'm list I've started listening to this tape in my car over and over and over and over and over again. It becomes my daily listen until I start putting him in between my ears and I start being able to do so. Now, now I, it took me about a month. I memorized the entire thing, all three parts, and all of a sudden, whenever there's a lull in the studio, he goes, and they're checking levels or whatever, I just don't like to sit there. We know we're in Othan. I'm Lincolnshire. 
where Mrs. Buckley lives, every July, peas go there. Every July. And, and I go through the whole thing, and he gets to the point where he goes, now what is it you want in your depths of your ignorance? What is it you want? Whatever it is you want, I can't deliver it because I just don't see it. Now it's, it's verbatim that Maurice knows this. So I know it down to the T, and I start doing it. So for about three years of the business, I'm driving engineers and directors nuts. We all love it because we know the outtake that Mo has it perfectly and is freaking hysterical. And but, he does it. but they've all heard it a hundred times, and yet somebody always goes, no, no, let him go on. I want to hear if he knows the whole thing. <laughs> so it wastes a whole lot of time. And finally, so they write this pinky in the brain episode called Yes Always, where we take that thing and we adapt it, we take the dirty words out of it. And and, and, you know, they typed up this script. Now, it happened to be that day I had to bury one of my best friends. Um, a gentleman, by the by, actually most people wouldn't use that term in association with him. There's a comedian named Sam Kinison back in the 90s. who kind of revolutionized raw comedy. Yeah, he was a dear friend for about 10 years. And, uh, you know, we started out together. And, uh, and, and so when Sam died, the day of the funeral, was the day of the recording, yes, always. So I came into my suit and I was as sad a sack as you can, you can imagine. He put this script in front of me. He had not says, seen it yet. Yeah. But this script in front of me says, yes, always. And I just looked at him and I went, no. He, I swear to God. And, and no, you're in, kidding me. Before he came in, all everybody said, don't tell Maurice what we're going to do. Right. Because this is the this is essentially a $400,000 in joke. Yeah. <laughs> only, at that point, only recording engineers knew yeah. The Orson Welles outtake. Now with YouTube, you can, you can Google Orson Welles outtake. Yeah, and you can AB it. What's really cool is that what Joe's talking about, and thank you for indulging us because it's a cool thing. What you can do is you can AB the audio of Orson Welles doing the, all those outtakes where he's really going off on these guys, and then pay the and then play the Pinky and the Brain episode called Yes Always, in right. which Brain is doing the Orson Welles, and it's really excellent. And and for the for Mr. Ruger and Mr. Spielberg and those guys to say, hey, let's turn this into a cartoon. That's pretty hip. Yeah. So that was that's that's the inside story on yes always. Thank you for asking, Joe. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. Next question. Next right question. Hi. Hi guys. Hi. Um, there's a fan theory out there that I want to get your opinion on. Yes. The theory says that Pinky is the genius and the brain is insane and Pinky's just pretending to be dumb. Theory? What do you mean theory? <laughs> yeah, right? There's a surprising amount of evidence for it. For example, like there's one episode where Brain lets Pinky try to take out over the world and he doesn't. Yeah. And like there's an episode called That's Smarts where like Brain makes a smart machine to make Pinky smart and he doesn't change all that much. So like I wanted your opinion on it whether you think it's actually plausible. Pinky? What, what, what is the nice man talking about? <laughs> well, then you see, he's really finally I don't understand. He's realized what everyone knows all along, that I am A, the handsomest, <laughs> and B, the smartest, and I get all the chicks. That's true. Unfortunately, what I get are baby chickens. That's right. <laughs> but I get a lot of phone numbers, so there is that. Um, no, and that is, uh, that's quite, well, first of all, the fact that there are even these sort of memes and, and all of these fan things. Yeah, thank you for thinking about us 20 years later. Attention. Thank you. <laughs> it's so great. It's really kept it alive. And uh, to me, that just shows what the creators of the show, uh, they're, they're genius, that they knew that they would be able to create something. I don't know that anybody knows. You never know when you're starting out to make a show it's going to have you know, a cumulative effect. Um, no, we did, that. Was, we, did, we did the first the first one we ever recorded was uh, was uh, Jim, the one with Jim Parrott. Was it? Uh, Yes, no, uh, uh, Win Big. Win Big. Win Big was the first one we ever recorded. And we didn't know how many more of these were coming down the pike. It was an anthology show, and they were trying out a lot of different characters. And we recorded, and I remember saying to you, God, I hope we get to do those guys again. Oh, yeah. They're fun. Yeah. You know, and it became its own TV series. It became uh, WB's lead in show on Sunday night against 60 Minutes. Yeah. <laughs> how the hell that? Who programmed that? Great programming program genius, though. Um, yeah, there was a programming genius who was insane. Um, but, you know, we, we were, we, it took on uh, legs. It took on a life of its own. There was one episode, though, where you're, like, levitating something. You're just levitating yeah. fruit while I'm explaining the plan. And, I, and Pinky, how are you doing that? What did I say? 
Do up, right? Do up, right? Yeah. I'm just like levitating, doing something truly magical. So, you know, there was, uh, there was even a little, uh, you know, I think there were some of the writers that actually thought that was the theory, too. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 what I always say when I'm asked that question is, that's why they call it a theory. <laughs> I don't know. All right, that was out of the rain. That's all. I know. I, mean, I, uh, I, I, I love the fact that it is fodder for conversation. You know, it's really cool. And um, thank you for bringing that up. I mean, I, I, I'm smart enough to know how, how nice it is to be here. So, at, at, to that extent, I'm, I'm a genius. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Who else has a question? Right up here with the ears. I had to stand up the whole time. Years. One of my questions that I had is, when the show was created, was there anything, was there anything so vulgar that they couldn't even put it on the show? So vulgar? No, vulgar. 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 Well, no. if there were anything vulgar, I wouldn't say to this crowd, because we have young people. Yeah. <clears throat> there was one episode, they wanted to do a, 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 a Christmas episode, where Pinky starts recounting all the, all the other schemes that they had. And it was an outtake, I mean, they took it out, I think Pinky was supposed to say, and what about the time we went back to Bethlehem? And, and yeah. like, we just went, no, we can't go there. Yeah, we, can't. <laughs> we cannot go there, no, no, no. Um, so, you know, back in time, it would be like a time travel episode. So that, that, that little, even a reference to that plan was next. But that's probably the most yeah, but extreme if you, thing. If your question is, are there outtakes that were vulgar? Oh, yeah. Oh. Heavens to Betsy, please. Because I mean, I could really get going. I, I mean, you get like, gosh darn it. Yeah, you. when you think about it, you get a bunch of people who, I mean, Maurice is a world-class stand-up, and, and you get him in there with Tress McNeil and, and Frank Welker and Jim Cummings and Jess Harnell and all these wonderful actors who are, you know, grown-ups. Um, and, and we just go and play. Oh, yeah, it gets pretty gnarly, and I would... I would Pay money to listen to them now. They're yeah, I, I don't even. I, you know. I mean, you know, you get together with your buddies. The day we did, you said a mouthful. I mean, there oh, were yeah. several f bombs and s bombs dropped as we blew our lines. <laughs> Although I'll tell you, who blew the least lines. Was the, the well, genius. that was the one that our friend the genius Gork here, Gorka Bressak, yeah. wrote this episode called uh, uh, "You Said a Mouthful." Yeah, I don't think you flubbed a single line. Then. No, well, thank you, but we were working at the Hackensack, Kiki Sack, Sock Plucker <laughs> Factory in the Caucasus. Yeah, Secaucus, did you? So you can imagine that with Plucker and Factory, <laughs> it was not... Flick the plug, plug the fig. Yeah. Flick the plug, 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 plug the fig. Yeah. So, you know, Peggy Babcock, Peggy Babcock. It can get a little gnarly. Yeah, but so we not only in blown lines, but at one point I got so frustrated, I think I shouted something un unrepeatable, and I went into the control room and there was Gordon Bresak, very proud of himself for writing this. Extremely clever episode. I just walked up to him like Lucy does to Linus, you know, in the uh, Campinas cartoons. I just slugged him in the shoulder. <laughs> and then came back in and finished doing the show. Um, thank you. All right, well, thank you. excuse me. We're going to go right next to him. Hi. Hi. I wanted to know what your favorite scene from the show is. Oh, golly. You know what? Honestly, I want, I think if I had to pick a favorite, um, uh, it, there is an episode. It's the Christmas episode, and uh, there's a scene in which uh, Pinky, you know, he's written a letter to Santa Claus. Please give my friend. He's really a lovely guy. He wants what's best for everybody. And Pinky hands Brain a keychain with the world on it, with the globe on it. So he literally gives Brain the world for Christmas. Yeah, I know, me too. And you watch that put four or five vodkas and it's, <laughs> it's so happy and so, so sweet. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. But that, that to me is very sweet because it really does, it really does sort of exemplify the relationship, even though it's, it's acrimonious or it seems to be acrimonious and, and contentious, there's a, nothing but deep love between the characters yeah. for each other. Speak for yourself. <laughs> That's my favorite. There you go. Yeah, no, it's, it's more just an ongoing irritation. It's like a favorite sweater that you love that just yeah. itches. That's <laughs> kind of the relationship. Um, no, we always played the love between Pinky and the Brain. That was very important to us. Is that you know we, we decided that we need to remember these characters essentially love each other. 
and um, you know, it was uh, it played with the energy of an elderly uh, uh, gay couple, perhaps. <laughs> Just you know, the back. I like to think of myself not so much as gay as ecstatic. <laughs> My favorite scene was when we first started to do uh, the uh, opening lines of Jim Parody oh, yeah. uh, of, uh, of the episode Win <laughs> Big. And, and then it went on and on until the last line of the finale, six years later. The whole show is my favorite line. No, uh, I guess, you know what, the Christmas episode for me also, uh, love that when he reads takes the letter and he's so angry and he reads the lovely things that Pinky has written and his voice starts to crack. That's definitely a high point for me. Um, but the first time Brain walks into a, uh, a door jam on stills <laughs> in Bubba Boba Brain and, and, and every time sits where he just whacks his head and goes, yes, that is the pain that will linger. <laughs> Pinky, if I could reach you, I would hurt you. You know, those, that, those little insults. And those those things that happened in that episode, <coughs> that, that would be that may be that kind of ties with the Christmas episode for my favorite episode. Yeah, there and, and when Brain moments. says, "Please, at, at the same, uh, it must be inordinate." Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. It must be inordinately taxing to be such a boob. <laughs> You have no idea. <laughs> I love that. It must be inordinately taxing to be such, such a boob. <laughs> and of course it probably is. <laughs> Who else had a question? We got one over here. We also have a gentleman who pulled up the script for the hack and sack, hacky, flip and sack, oh, whatever no it's called. Way. Really Wanting to know if you'll read a couple lines from that. Sure. Sure. All right, after this question. Hi. So. Hi. <laughs> I first of all want to say you guys are two of my favorite voice actors in the world. Thank you. You're one of my favorite people in the world. Aww. Um, so I actually I know it's a pinky in the brain panel, but I have to ask you about Freakazoid. Because that's my favorite show. Oh, it's great. Really? In the band. Yeah. Um, what was it like working on it, especially with Ed Asner? Because he was amazing. <laughs> I mean, a lot of great people. Jonathan Harris was on that show. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Um, Ed, Ed is a delight, though. Ed is just so, uh, you know, up for anything, you know? It didn't matter. Yes. Ed is always up for whatever his character's got to do or say. And uh, he's still, to this day, just, you know, just loves, he loves working and he loves cartoons. Of course, Up was a tremendous, oh, fantastic. You know, finally gave him his due. He was marvelous. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he comes from an era, an era where people, you know, dressed a little, even if they were doing a radio or voiceover or something like that. And I used to dress, I, this is me dressed up, by the way. I used to wear, like, just a t-shirt with maybe a hole in it and a, you know, plaid shirt over it. I remember the first time I, I walked in, I walked into the studio and it just goes, no homeless. Um, no homeless. No homeless. That was my introduction to Ed Asner. So, um... But you know, it was it was tremendous fun. Paul Rugg is a genius, and who you know, who is also on Seventy? Oh, he writes, he writes on the Seventy and plays Lord Starchbottom, which is sort of a toned down version of his Mr. Director from Animaniacs. Like, Lavenshire, you know, he's kind of that guy right there. Um, but you know, I, I played Longhorn on the show, and uh, you know, it was just basically doing Johnny Cash, uh, and he was uh, you know he was, he was he was a fun character. Um, but you know, the, the, it, was, it was the same sort of um, zany Warner Brothers feel for doing yeah. that show. Same group, different focus. Um, and the, it was the first time I'd ever heard the word "kookyas" <laughs> in an afternoon animated cartoon. I got to do a couple of episodes with uh, the fabulous because I'm now crazy about Penny Dreadful. Um, the fabulous David Warner, uh, who played a character called Logie. And um, I did a couple of episodes him. I worked with him originally on Tron, 1982. And, um, and so the lobe, right? Yeah, the lobe. The lobe, yeah. Or something like that. So, yeah, the lobe. And so I got to work with David and, and Corey Burton. And oh my goodness. And yeah, that was, that was a really cool show. You have excellent taste. Great show. Very cool. We're doing something. Okay. I have his phone with the scene in. Oh great! Okay, this is the, this is the one we're talking about that was so goofy. Oh, yeah, all right. So we have so, so. All you gotta do is scroll through. Uh, 
if you lean off this page, I don't know what will happen, but as much as you want to read, he wants you to start with the brain right there. Okay. I must study the operation of the Hackensack, Sacco, Kiki Sack, Sack Kicker Factory in detail, Binky. The brain? How will we, two small mice, convince the huge owner to let us inspect his enormous factory? We will introduce ourselves as the only thing guaranteed... Don't remember, remember, it's the 90s. <laughs> we will introduce ourselves as the only thing guaranteed to ruin the respect of any American businessman. Japanese industrialists seeking to buy the company. <laughs> okay, they, en they enter the building. Now remember, Pinky, I am Mr. Kawasaki, and you are Mr. Hayasaka. Welcome to the Hackensack Sacco Kiki Sack Sack Kicker Factory. I'm Kirk Sackett, Senior Supervisor. Can I help you? Uh, yes. We are two tiny Japanese industrialists <laughs> seeking to buy this company. I am Mr. Kawasaki. And I am Mr. Um, Turkey Lurkey. <laughs> Turkey Lurkey? Turkey Lurkey. Oh, that's you. Turkey Lurkey? Isn't it Hayasaka? Well, point! I must have missed it. I am honored by your visit. Let me show you our assembly line. First, sheets of sheer synthetic sheepskins are slid into several kiddie sack shoe shapes in shapely shoe sizes by six sitting sheet slitters. I only see five sitting sheet slitters. The sixth sitting sheet slitter is sick. Oh, sorry. The sixth sitting sheet slitter is sick. His son Sammy is sobbing till the sixth six sheet slitter is back sitting pretty. The sheet slitter? No, I'm the sheet slitter's son. Well, you keep on slitting sheets until the sheet slitter comes. <laughs> no. You of the machine labeled sheet slitter shoe shaper. Yeah, and then I say the shoe shaper then shapes the slit synthetic sheepskin sheets and shoots out shoes through the chute. Now then, this is Mr. Puckett, the new kitty sock plucker. Um, I had to fire our previous sock plucker. He had a bit of an attitude. So you sack the cocky, khaki, sicky, kicky, sock, sock plucker? The, se <laughs> the second cocky, khaki, sicky, sack, sock plucker I sacked since the six sitting sheets that are got sick. The lights dim, machines whir, and slows down. Whoops, don't worry. Just as a, just an electrical problem. One of the kicky sack sock pluckers will have to flick the plug. Oh my god. Not the khaki sock plucker? Oh my, no. The kicky sack sock plucker flicks the plug. The khaki sock plucker can't reach the socket over the latex child perambulator fenders who he used to line the treadmill. It might make more sense to have the sixth city sheet slitter's son flick the plug if the sack pickers and the sock pluckers are behind the rubber baby bubba good buggy bumpers. <laughs> oh, shoot. Sammy flicks the plug, everything wears back up. I never thought of that. Of course you didn't. <laughs> is one smart fellow. He felt smart. And then I say, oh, Zark. Uh, two smart fellows, they felt smart. And you have a toy boat mounted on the wall. Right. Plaque below it says, first prize, hack and sack, sock, go, kicky sack, sack, kicker, khaki, sock factory, room, annual picnic. Oh, and what, pray tell, is this? Oh, this is the toy boat I won in the sock race at the hack and sack, sock, go, kicky sack, sack, kicker, khaki, socky, sack, victory picnic in Sarkakis. <laughs> They move further down the conveyor belt line. And I'm having too much fun. Let's yeah. <laughs> and finally, the Sacco Kiki Sack Sack Kickers are inflated by our genius Parker Packard Pewter Pressure Pump. <laughs> Look, Brain. I mean, um, Mr. Turkey Lurkey, it's gravel. I'm Kawasaki, Pinky. You're Turkey Lurkey. Well, I don't think there's a very nice thing to say about a person. <laughs> I've seen all I need to see of the Hack and Sack Sacco Kiki -Sack, Sack Sack Kicker Factory. Pinky, we must take our leave and sneak back under cover of nightfall. They walk into a large pair of shoes. Oof! <laughs> they fall, the breath knocked out of them. They look up and up and up at the unsmiling face of the factory guard. I see you've met the Hackensack Sacco Kicky Sack Sack Kicker, factory security specialist, Peggy Babcock. <laughs> no one gets past her. Peggy Babcock, Peggy Babcock, Peggy Babcock. Why does that name sound familiar? Oh, I think I know. Peggy picked a pick of pickle peppers. <laughs> Pinky, Peggy Rouse dissolved to Acme Labs. Night. This is it, Pinky. Our super, our, I'm sorry, our supper brain? You got all those other words and you just... <laughs> I can't say super. So super in the supper? I'm sorry. Our dinner brain? No, Pinky. This pea contains a single helium element. 
Once this P is added to the hack and sack, sacko, kicky sack, sack kicker, factory assembly line, every sacko, kicky sack, sack kicker will fill with helium the first time it's inflated. Now, Kiki, here is the plan. Every step must be performed with precision. You must slip the 6 6 sheet slitter sun sheet. Secure it next to the toy boat from the hack and sack, sacko, kicky sack, sack kickers, picnic and sacacus. Stretch it past the sack picker's station and the sock picker's chute. Pick a sack, pluck a sack, and flick the plug so I can put the pee in the plug ballast and bounce it off the rubber baby buggy bumper into the Parker Packard purple pewter pressure pump. Is that understood? I understood now and Pinky. <laughs> Must be fooling myself. This will never work. Oh, why not, Brain? All I have to do is slip the six six sheets into Sun's sheet and secure it next to the toy boat from the hack and sack, sock, the kicky sack, sack, pit kickers, picnic, and sockockers. Speed it past the sock kicker, <laughs> sock picker, and the sock plucker, and pick a sack, pluck a sock, and flick the plug. Why, yes, Pinky, that was that was perfect. Point, yes, and I have no idea what it means. <laughs> Written by Gordon Bressack. And Charles Howell. Charlie Howell. Yes. Charlie Howell IV. Yes, genius. Two of them together. Now then. All right, I got a couple questions right over here. Go ahead. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet both of you. I'll freely admit, I haven't watched enough of Piggy in the Brain. Most I can remember it were, your two se were most of your scenes from uh, Wacko's Wish. My personal favorite line being like, you know, if we were bags of fly, we'd be born with little bags of nuts. Pinky, you are a little bag of nuts. Yes. But uh, my biggest question for you, um, you've worked since, I can take that you worked with these characters for so long. Do you have a favorite memory of working on Pinky and the Brain together? The whole, yeah, the whole thing's a uh, terrific memory. I mean, you know, there was no, there was no downtime. There was no, there was no session where it just seemed like another job. It was like Never. getting to go to work and have fun for a living, you know, I mean, you know, the, the, the day, the day, yes, that, that my friend Sam died, we did yes, always, tremendous, the day we did, uh, the day we did the first half hour episode, which was, uh, the, it was, it was uh, the one where it's almost like a Monty Python episode where, where, with the dragon and, uh, and Merlin, that was part of Animaniac. Yeah, right. yeah that, was, we, we, that, day, that day was the day that we first got a clue, maybe we're getting our own show. Because they were originally 11 minute episodes, and yet yeah. this was an entire 22 minute episode of Pinky and the Rings. The only thing on that episode of Animaniacs, and I remember being, you know, going, Do you think they're going to spin us off? And you went, yeah. Jaws! Yeah. <laughs> no, there was no downside. I mean, I, truly, we are, you know, with all due respect to Lou Gehrig, I think I'm the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I mean, we go to work every day with people that we would choose to be our best friends, and then we get paid. And then, years <laughs> later, we have nice folks like you that come out and tell us they enjoy what we do. It's, there really is no downside. The hardest part about this gig is getting it. And once you're working, it's just pure joy, you know? I don't know how many of you follow us on Twitter. Um, you're at Yakko Pinky. At Yakko Pinky. And I'm at Maurice LaMarche, my name with no spaces in all caps. And my Twitter headline is, whenever you tell me I, I made your childhood better. You make my middle age better. Because yeah. that's the thing that I hear most often. And it's just, it's the reason we do these cons, you know? It is, it's just a joy to be able to share this yeah, stuff. Yeah, it really guys. is, it really, really is. Thanks All right, next question, up oh, back. Way back here. Oh, hi. Okay. Hi. Hello, nurse. <laughs> <laughs> What was your favorite response to Brain saying, Pinky. When, when are we going to do tonight? Uh, oh, okay. And well, no, I think what you what is your name, sweetie? Brenda. Brenda, ask me, Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? Well, I think so, Brenda, but me and Pippi Longstocking, I mean, what would the children look like? <laughs> Uh, 
What's that? My other favorite is the ones, one of the ones you did for a bump for the show, which was, but does this queen water ski? But, but what? Does the queen water ski? Does the pig water ski? That's a good one. Also, I liked them. Um, Why would anyone want to pierce Brosnan? <laughs> My favorite is, uh, is, um... Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? Well, thanks, so, Brian, but if Jimmy cracks Cohen and nobody cares, why does he keep doing it? That's my favorite. I love that, too. All right, right up front here. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you for the, um, entertainment you've given me for the, uh, last 20 years of your, um, careers. Thank you, sir. Well, I was gonna add, well, it's not Pinky in the brain, but, um, could we hear Yakko ask Pinky what he's pondering? Oh, Yakko? No, let's see. Hey, Pinky, what the hell is your problem? <laughs> Wait, let me get this straight. You've got your own freaking show? Are you kidding me? Um, let's see. Hey, Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? Well, I think so, Yakko, but if um, Susan B. Anthony and Ann B. Davis, then who be Arthur? <laughs> That's one of yours, isn't it? Totally improvised, Rob Paulson. Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Thank you. It is as good as anything we used in the show. That and four bucks will get you a latte at Starbucks. <laughs> All right, next question. Yes. Right over here. Hello. I, Hello. I have two pet rats named Gadget and Gizmo. We are trying to take over the world. Do you have any advice for us? Yeah. Yes. Change the names of Pinky and the Brain. Pinky and the Brain. No, and, ditch, and ditch the rats. We are mice. There's a huge difference. Yes, Mickey Mouse is really a rat. We are mice. Yes. Uh, I don't know, probably stay in school. Learn genetic engineering. Yep. Gene and splicing. Quantum. And then accelerate their intelligence in an infant nibulator. Quantum, quantum mechanics is always good and helpful. Uh, and uh, for the other one, the stupid one, just tell him to learn how to say narf and he'll be good. <laughs> All right, right down. Or just pay us a whole bunch of money and we'll come over and narrate we'll do for it your twice. Wife. Yeah. We'll just stand there and do it, but you know, I don't know if you got it. Yeah. Hi. Um, after all these years, can you still do like the Around the World song and like the Christmas The Countries of the World song? Yeah. Rob Paulson? Yeah. Can he do the Countries of the World song? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Rob, wait a second. Rob, how close are we? Oh, you know what? I'll be happy to do it. You want to do it now or you want to close out with it? Would you want to close? Let's do it now. I, I think, I think somehow, it's just a hunch that I have, and I'm not talking about my back. I, uh, it's a hunch that I have that Rob somehow remembers I'll see, the countries of the world song. I'll see if I can, if I can uh, squeeze one out, as he said. Yeah, I'll squeeze one out. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm standing behind you. Don't yeah, be careful. Phrase, okay, look, squeeze fire, one out. They're, they're firing it up. Great. As I said, I mean, I'm in the witness protection program, so if you guys could you know, block out my face. It goes something like this. It goes, United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Dominican, Cuba, I'm not going to be 
the Slavia. Curry, Mauritania, and then the Canadian, Monaco, Lickens, and Malta, and Palestine, Fiji, Australia, Sudan. For those of you who have listened to my podcast, on which Maurice has been a guest two or three times, I have a podcast called Talkin' Tunes, yeah! which, thank you, which you guys should listen to because it's free and it's really funny, but as we talked about, Randy Rogel, who wrote that uh, song and many other songs for Animaniacs, and I have, find, have gotten permission from Warner Brothers and Mr. Spielberg to take that on the road and do a live music show. And so, uh, as many of you know, a lot of the music in Animaniacs was spectacular. And so the first one we're doing is the 26th of September, thank you Maurice, in um, Denver with the Colorado Symphony, 80 pieces. So we're gonna be able to do all of those cool Wonder Brothers songs. 80 piece orchestra. 80 piece orchestra. And hearing that stuff live with that band is, with any band. Is and they're good. flying me in to just do my little dance. Dr. Mark's dance. <laughs> yeah, just doing his dance. But anyway, so in answer to your question, yes, I still know it. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have to say, I, I, I have one, one song that I have memorized as well from yes. the Animaniacs days. I don't know if you know this, but I was the stunt burper for Jess mm -hmm. Arnell for Wacko. Okay, so let me help you. Great Wacko Roddy. So. Right, it goes, it's, a, it's a little Strauss thing that goes like this. It goes, la, 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 la. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> la, 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 la. La 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 is it any wonder why chicks dig him? I mean, truly, you know. You got a guy with a job and a car and can do that. that He's irresistible. The movie, for those who saw the movie Elf, uh, I, I did the 15 second long burp after Buddy drinks the entire can of coke. Oh, and by the way, by the way, another a testament to Maurice's not only his talent, but uh, it turns out that Tim Burton is a big fan of Pinky and the Brain, and so when he was yes. making Ed Wood, Vince D'Onofrio, who played the young Orson Welles in the movie and did it beautifully, but he didn't quite have the, the vocal chops down. Maurice's voice is all of, of um, Vince D'Onofrio playing. Or so I, I, I've acted with Johnny Depp. I mean, I, I was yeah, David in my group. Who else has a question? question? Question right here. Yeah. Um, hi. Hi. I was wondering what made you guys want to get into voice acting. Also, I recognize your perks from Futurama. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did the Maurice, other one. by the way, just so we know, Maurice has just, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday was just nominated for his fifth Emmy for Futurama, two of which he's already won. Right? So, not to mention my, my dear friend here winning his first Emmy, and I think there are more in your future, for playing Pinky on Pinky and the Brain in 19, what was it, 90? 50s? 1996, right? 99. 99. So, 99. we have, a, we have but, many um, of these up here. So, Maurice is like, he is 150,000 characters on Futurama, it's crazy, but uh, what made me, well, I didn't really start out to be a voice actor per se, like most of us, uh, I started out as a singer who became an actor and then moved to L.A. ostensibly to do live action stuff, which I was, doing episodic television and a lot of on-camera commercials, but you quickly understand that there are a million average-looking white guys with SAG cards. And um, when the opportunity arose, it wasn't that I didn't want to do cartoons, I figured it was kind of a closed shop and that wasn't my focus. It became my focus once I started getting in there and understanding that I would not be limited by the way I look, thank goodness, and I could, you know, get hired for things where my voice that I would never be considered for on camera, and actually the gentleman who really uh, uh, sort of encouraged me to, to really go after voice work 
was Alan Oppenheimer, who was one of the honored guests here this week. Right. Alan and I worked together, we were working on Smurfs, I think, and he said, you know what, young man, I think you should really work in this direction. And he was right. I, Alan was terrific. So um, it, it, didn't take, it doesn't take long to realize it's a marvelous way to make a living. Um, but ultimately, acting is acting. Whether it's with your voice or your face, it's about creating characters and not being, you know, uh, concerned about your sort of exterior and focusing yep. and being fearless. And so it's just a, it's another extension of my desire to perform. We just don't have to wait for hair lighting, makeup, you know, yeah. standing the key light. But it's still acting, and we do get to, you know, we don't have to do so much memorization. So, uh, although there are actors like to be off book. Did you know Gene Hackman, when he does voiceovers, he totally memorizes these things? He does not like to read. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. No. He's the greatest criminal mind of our time. Yeah. <laughs> Who else has All right, we got a question right down front. Oh, hi. Hi. Um, hi, Joe. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. Uh, just really quick, you guys were talking about how you bonded over Monty Python. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you had any favorite skits that you might have done in any particular voices. Uh, we were we talking about Python's possibly like the Dead Parents sketch. Oh yeah, I mean I, I, I love them all. I, I, I went to see the Pythons twice at the Hollywood Bowl years oh. and years ago. They're doing their very last shows now in London. I actually it's a good like cashing in a CD to, to fly yeah. over there and catch it. If I'd, have been able to, if I'd have had the money, I think I would have gone to the O2 and seen those guys. Because uh, actually, in August, you're going to see them in uh, movie theaters over here. Oh, you're going to play? play oh, yeah, we're great. We're, yeah, but, it's, uh, it's like what Zeppelin did. When Zeppelin got back together at the O2, they did that one-off, and the concert film was spectacular. They, they sound, the guys are grandfathers, and they sound fantastic, you know. But um, the Pythons, yeah, I, um, I, I mean, I love them all. I love the, the, uh, the, the you know, the, the dead parrot, the, uh, the argument. The argument sketch. I think that's um, what we. Started doing. Some of the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, obviously the movies, and um, <laughs> we do the, you know, Doug and Dinsdale, Yeah, Doug and Dinsdale. I've watched the uh, Chinese. Dinsdale thinks that the uh, humorous impact would be somewhat dissipated by the prolongation of this song. He was a cruel man, but fair. Yeah. The, the police have uh, photographs of him nailing your head to the copier. Oh, yeah, well, he did do that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, Sam Jackson did that. Yeah. 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 We, we love all that stuff, we're to total Python geeks, and one of our very dear friends, um, who I am, if I didn't love him so much, I'd be terribly jealous, because he's probably the most handsome man I know, is Carrie Elvis. And my wife has a huge crush on him, Carrie Elvis. And shit, I do too, you know. So, um, because I said I'm ecstatic. And, um, but Carrie also is a Python geek, and we get together and it's just, it's so much fun just to, you know, go off and all that stuff. And, interestingly, Eric Idle played Pinky's mother and father in an episode of Pinky the Bear. Yeah, so that was... You did both, both parts. It was really fun. Yeah, it was very cool. I actually forgot about that. Yeah. And the other thing that we really bonded over was Peter Cook and Dudley Derek and Clive. The Derek and Clive tapes, which we cannot do for you. Yeah, if you guys have... So a little filthy. Little, it's, we cannot do it, but we constantly talk to each oh, other. About it. It's really vile, but it's so fun. Because Peter Cook and Dudley Moore, as you know, were in Beyond the Fringe and incredibly gifted actors, but also troubled. And that was, you know, it's some, I'm often like I had the great privilege of working with Jonathan Winters many times. And part of Jonathan's genius, he was one of my huge heroes, Carol Burnett, Harvey Corman, Tim Conway, you know, all of them when I was a kid, um, Red Skelton. But part of Jonathan's genius is his, was his madness. And it's, it's often, it's a very fine line. Yeah. And um, nobody knows that better than people, you know, stand-ups people. It's a tough gig, and, and part of what makes you interesting is, is that nervous tick, and, which we were both in as well. Um, but the, uh, uh, but yeah, if you, get, if you go, go home and listen to Google Peter Cook and Dudley Moore doing Derek and Clive, it's not for public consumption. Yeah, kids don't go home and look. It's just, uh, yeah, not kids, you can, but, but um, you turn it on and remind, it's all improvised, all of it. You know, it, it's maybe with a little chemical inducement, but it's really anyway. Those guys, are, those guys inspired Mo yeah, and I. So those were our, those were our bonding. Yeah. You and know what's funny is that people come up to yourselves. People come up to us now and tell us that they have that same. They have. They tell us they have a pinky in the brain relationship. That they're two friends who they one calls each other pinky, the other one calls each other brain. And they do stuff with each other. So that, now we're the cause of people bonding yeah. over characters. It's, a lot of it's so bizarre too. to think of that. It's, you know, we were kids in high school watching Monty Python. You know, we didn't know each other yet. We were best friends who wouldn't meet. But it's weird to think that we would now have something a little bit similar to that. 
it's uh, it's such a such an interesting thought. To be yeah, of, you know, wacky. Thank you for asking. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Say hi to Paula for us. Thank you. All right, I'm going to give you guys two choices now, the audience. You have to, by cheer, let me know. Do you want to ask more questions or get a surprise? Do you want, by a scream, do you want more questions? Overwhelmingly, they want a surprise. All right. So, God, okay, here it is. I have a third nipple, and... <laughs> that is really narfy. In front of you on that table is a folder. A folder with secret instructions. Yes. Open it and read out loud to the fans. Oh, this is by uh, Ted Geisel. Yes. You, guys you know better as Dr. Seuss. Right. <laughs> Ted wrote a little book years ago called Green Eggs and Ham. <laughs> and so uh, our friend Jeff uh, Zanini over there, who is entirely too handsome, which I'm really sick about too. And buff. Yeah. Uh, said that we should do this, I think it's a great idea. So here we go, we're gonna step pinky in the brain. In green eggs and ham. In green eggs and ham. <laughs> I am Sam. I am Sam. Sam, I am. That's Sam, I am. That's Sam, I am. I do not like that Sam, I am. Do you, would you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam, I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Would you like them here or there? I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Hmm. <laughs> would you like them in a house? Would you like them with a mouse? I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Hmm. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a fox? Not in a box, not with a fox, not in a house, not with a mouse. I would not eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I would not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Would you, could you, in a car? Eat them, eat them, here they are. I would not, could not, in a car. You may like them, you will see. You may like them in a tree. I would not, could not in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. You know, you are a great big pain in the ass. <laughs> Train? Not on a train, not in a tree, not in a car. Sam, let me be. I would not, could not in a box. I would not, could not with a fox. I will not eat them in a house. I will not eat them here or there. I will not eat them anywhere. I do not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Say, in the dark. Here in the dark? Would you, could you in the dark? I would not, could not in the dark. Would you, could you in the rain? I would not, could not, in a, in the rain, not in the dark, not on a train, not in the car, not in a tree. I do not like them, Sam, you see. Not in a house, not in a box, not with a mouse, not with a fox. I will not eat them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. So what you're saying to me is you do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. <laughs> could you, would you with a goat? <laughs> Although it is considered a felony in Connecticut. <laughs> I would not, could not, with a goat. Would you, could you, on a boat? I could not, would not, on a boat. I will not, will not, with a goat. <laughs> I will not eat them in the rain, not in the dark, not in a tree, not in a car. You let me be. I do not like them in a box. I do not like them with a fox. I will not eat them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. You do not like them, so you say. Try them, try them, and you may. Try them, and you may, I say. Sam, if you will let me be, I will try them. You will see. This is him eating them now. <laughs> say, I like green eggs and ham. 
I do like them, Sam, I am. And I would eat them in a boat. And I would eat them with a ghost. And I would eat them in the rain, in the dark, and on a train. And in a car, and in a tree. They are so good. So good, you see? So I would eat them in a box. And I would eat them with a fox. And I would eat them in a house. And I would eat them with a mouse. And I will eat them here and there. Say, I will eat them anywhere. I do so like green eggs and ham. Thank you. Thank you, Sam I am. <laughs>